Hey, Edge Lords! Thanks so much for tuning in on your internet tuner. Uh, we want you to hit subscribe. Isn't that right, Robbie? That's right. That way you'll get the episodes as they come out every single Wednesday. You need it and you want it. Oh, 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 is I was in a dead sleep. Oh, yeah. Well, is, is it time for uh, this is uh, my alarm clock? It sure is. It's time for the Edge Lords. Yes, yes, yes. This is just for the YouTube people. They're the people who are uh, tuning in just through their iPhone or whatever, not seeing you give me a hand job. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, or, 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 or miming a hand job. Yeah. Yes. It's my air yes. drumming. Or but air you got very uh, defensive. There'd be nothing wrong with you giving me a hand job uh, if you chose to. A couple friends. Well, uh, I wouldn't go to heaven. Uh, well, you would because it's about friendship and sharing. I guess so. I'm giving. You're giving. Yep. You're giving, and it's better to give than to receive for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, it is better to receive than to give. <laughs> uh, those are the rules. I don't write them. That is the Bible. <laughs> for me, <laughs> it is better to receive. Uh, Graham, how are you? I, I, I mean, we, you know, there's a little bit of movie magic that goes into this podcast. Don't tell the folks at home, but uh, I haven't seen you in about three weeks. We've done a couple pre-tapes. Don't, don't, don't let the word get out on that. I would say two weeks. I haven't seen you in about two weeks, yes. Graham. Uh, yeah, yes, you're we've right. We've both been on the road. We've you been and on I the have road? both, which is good. Yes, big career stuff. It is good that we are making money. Yes. We are uh, out there on the road, on the road uh, and telling people not to get vaccines. Don't get vaccinated. And as soon as they open Turkey back up, we are oh, we're going on we're tour going there. We're going to Turkey and to tell them not to get vaccines. Don't get that vaccine. You'll it's become, a lie. Uh, uh, you'll have gay autism a like sh- all of North America. shill for Microsoft. Yes, a shill for Microsoft. And uh, it's not a comedy tour that we're on. No, no, it is an. Uh, we separately go around we both, America. Yes, we made sure to both get vaccinated, so all the shows will be safe. Uh, <laughs> yes, will, we got vaccinated. They will be socially distanced, yeah. and uh, but then we tell you uh, not to be sheep. Don't don't be a sheep. Don't get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it sold out. So. Be a lamb unto God. Yes, yes. Not a sheep. This podcast really taking a turn into being a. Uh, a young contemporary Christian podcast. I was <laughs> talking to. Is there more money in that? Because we should there consider it. Definitely, is more <laughs> money in it. Uh, I there. I was talking to my uh, my girlfriend mm-hmm. Julia Claire, and um, she was like, "We should go to Fenway." This so, is the first time you ever said your girlfriend's name on the pod. I've said I, maybe you've referenced having a girlfriend before, but I think she's remained unnamed. No, I've said it, I've said her name before. I almost said I said it her name before. <laughs> I, I said it. I said it before. Uh, well, shout out to the lovely uh, Julia Claire. Yes, she says hello. By the way, um, did she say anything else? No, just no. hello. She said, "Keep it at that. <laughs> <Okay>. uh-huh. <laughs> Keep it short." <laughs> I want it to be curt. I don't want any funny business. <laughs> um, anyway. She's like, she's from Boston. She's like, well, we should go to Fenway Park and see the Blue Jays play. Yeah, she was Boston. like, we should go to fucking Fenway Park. Yes, she starts talking like that and yeah, she starts she is- calling me uh, a queer, and uh, <laughs> it kind of turns me on. And I need to figure that out. I need to unpack see, that. What that is about? I need to go to therapy. But <laughs> anyway, um, she was like, yeah, because I'm a big Blue Jays fan. I'm from Canada, and this week in edging. Uh, and um, she, so, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll go, and uh, I'll just uh, wear my Blue Jays hat, and just I'll just shout Death to America.' <laughs> <laughs> That's how I cheer for my team. Yeah, Death to America. Yeah, Go Jays. <laughs> Death to America. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and just see how that how that turns out. And then um, we were walking yesterday. We were walking by. It was sort of became like an inside joke, you know, uh-huh. between us. And uh, we walked by a guy with a Blue Jays hat yesterday and um uh we were joking like uh death to america and to you uh-huh. <laughs> just about blue jays fans death to america and to you yeah yeah <laughs> love it very polite yeah well it's yeah. very uh, it's like very catholic yes isn't it? yeah and unto you yeah and unto the, you one of the uh a few times in my adult life where i i was almost in a fist fight mm-hmm. uh was i cannot uh, imagine that uh, you don't want to, buddy, because no, you couldn't handle when the fury comes your way. When I, 
get full mountain, rain the pain down yes. on someone. You really notice the kettlebell workouts. You thing, sure huh? do. Yeah. Uh, I was, it was a friend's bachelor party, probably like, you know, and I guess I say adult life kind of, because we were like 26 or something. That's adult. Uh, that's adult, yeah. And uh, we went to a uh, Ray's Socks series at Fenway. Mm-hmm. So it was just nine dudes in like Ray's gear yes. at Fenway. And it just hap- so happened that like this night we You're just from- like- from- Raytown. That's right. Tampa yes. Bay. Tampa Bay. And it was one of those just games where I think we won like 14 to 1. Ah, boy. Uh, people weren't in a great mood. There was a lot of sad, sweet Carolines that night. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then later we're in around Fenway, whatever that is, and we, we walk into a bar. And again, nine people decked in raise gears, in raise gear, walk into the bar. And some dude at the bar is like, uh, no hats in here, gentlemen. And like, we look around the bar and everyone is wearing a hat. It's yep. not a no hats in here place. Yes. And we're like, ah, we're good. We're just going to keep these on. Enjoy your night, you know? And then my buddy, uh, Adrian, goes to sit down at, at the bar and this guy uh, literally grabs the sunglasses off his face. Oh. Uh, yeah. Look, we're talking about like a Boston guy whose life is probably the Red Sox. Yes. This is all he lives for. In walk in a baseball team size group of Rays fans in Rays hats, and he's fuming. He yeah. hates this. And he basically uh, like threatens to break the sunglasses or whatever. And Adrian, being like a normal person, is like, can you just give those back, please? You know, yeah. like, just give those back to me. And the guy's like making a thing of it. And the bartender's like, folks, just take it outside. Uh, so this guy and his like group of friends go outside and then uh, there's probably like three of them. And I think like then like five of my friends go outside uh, and I'm just kind of like, what, what is, what is happening? Uh, poor here? Robbie's getting what is swept up. Yeah. What am I getting? I'm yeah. about to be in a sports based <laughs> fight. <laughs> this and is, you are not a young 26 year old. I imagine you are 26 going at this time going on 36. From, going on from 42. the time I've been 14, I've been 57. Yes. 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 Uh, so no. uh, yeah. Well, the, yes. The whole, this like, is ridiculous. Yes. That that's yeah. me. And then, uh, they, I, uh, whatever. No you one called it a sports based fisticuffs. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. And then it didn't come to blows. He got his sunglasses come back to blow. And I think my buddy Brian came back inside. It was his bachelor party. And he's like, why weren't you out there with us? And I was like, I, I, it ended the way I absolutely knew it would, which was like a bunch of people being like, Fine, take your sunglasses back. Yeah, and uh, and had I seen through the window that there was a fist fight out there, then I, I probably would have come out, but I would have done it like Royal Rumble style. The fight would have been going for 30 seconds, then I come in, uh, yes, you know, full of energy, full of energy, yes, flying me right out the gate. Boy. You don't see that. Long coming. Bak. Remember that movie? Oh, no, great movie, the, yes. the way of the Thai warrior, yes, or just something. the the falling knee, yes, yeah. Long Bak. That's, that's why I would have run in screaming, Ang Bak! And just, <laughs> just absolutely got caught in midair and thrown to the ground. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you for, would involuntarily yes. say Ang Bak. I would have gone straight from Ang Bak to my back. Yeah, my back! <laughs> Ang my back! <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we were both uh, on the road. Graham, how was the road for you? Any Anything interesting happen? Oh, God, so much cocaine and, uh, and prostitution. Yes. Um... A lot of, yeah, 1980s comedy shenanigans. Yeah, that's what happens out there. Yep, on the road. No, I uh, played golf with my married friend, Nate, uh-huh. a lot. And then um, uh, I went to, a, I did go, to, it's open down there and I am vaccinated and I went to a honky tonk in Nashville. Uh huh. And it was full of 60 year old vaccinated moms and dads yes. from Michigan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I partied with a bunch of moms and dads from Michigan. Tell you what, you get a lot of 60 uh, year old moms and dads who are vaccinated. That's a recipe for some swinging. My yeah, friends. you're right. That's a recipe for a couple coming up to you saying, Can we buy you a drink? Yeah. We like the cut of your jib. You're under 100. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. How would you like to fuck me and my wife? I wouldn't. It would make me sick, and I am straight. So that's a maybe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you turned on that pretty quickly. You yeah. buy me a hamburger. <laughs> Uh, it's a meeting those patties yeah. you know what i mean i was in a very different vibe i was doing shows down in miami where you were recently mm-hmm. uh i was there i was with uh, a buddy of of mine of ours andrew schultz uh no, i think it was three weeks because it was before i went to miami yeah yep so i was right once again i'm not good with time mm. and uh 
uh, he's a you know Andrew is a is a is a successful yes. comedian. He's a he's a wealthy man from yes. his comedy, and uh, he attracts other young wealthy people who are they are just uh, they're all over Miami. That Miami is a is a place to be uh, mm. uh, rich. Uh, and like to spend that money. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was like, I was just, I was, uh, you know, somehow with that description, you wouldn't believe this, but I was out of place a little yes. bit. Yes. And uh, I'm in, the, they're sitting in the green room. You're and, a stay in the bar type guy. Yeah, Look me. through the window. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. The guy who brings yeah. a book to the bar. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, in the green room post show, there are some young uh, Richie Riches that I'm talking about. And literally the conversation that they, I'm watching uh not really a part of is uh, they're talking about their favorite types of yachts. No. Yes. And what color, what's the best color for a yacht? I like an all black yacht. I think it's such a clean look. And I like a navy blue yacht. And then <laughs> I, I think I go take a piss and I come back. And now the conversation has turned to. You know, I saw a gold yacht once. Oh my! That was that's a real. S- they're talking about a gold yacht, and then the other one is one person is saying, "No, there's only uh, this one gold yacht," and then the other one is like, "No, no, no, there's there's two gold yachts." Now they're Google imaging gold yacht, and he's showing a picture of a gold yacht, and he's like, "No, no, no, not that gold yacht. It's the other gold yacht." <laughs> and this is the first time I, I the first time I joined in the conversation <laughs> was to. Uh, laugh out loud and be like, <laughs> you guys only know about two of the golden yachts. <laughs> A loser. Loser alert. <laughs> I've been on more golden yachts than you could imagine. And they did they get that or no? You know what? They did kind of get it. They yeah. were like, oh, maybe we are uh, not self-aware. No. Yeah. And and is, does Andrew have, have yacht money? No, he doesn't have golden yacht money, but uh, he certainly... Uh, you know, his like fame and success has has earned him access onto at least a, a silver yacht. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, so there wasn't him having this conversation, by the way. This was my family owns a canoe. This was people in the green room. Ooh, what's it made out of? Fiberglass. Okay, less interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. We can't afford a, a metal Grummond canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Who could? Not in this economy? No, no way. Uh, but you know what? Uh, would help us both afford a gold yacht is getting these sponsors in. getting these sponsors baby glasses are coming on glasses are coming on because it's sponsor time what a sweet sponsor segue we're time. really getting good at we this. are really nailing it we are nailing this and this is a uh this is a sponsor i'm excited to have because this is a hot industry it's a hot industry on it's a uh, it's on the cusp. Yes, right on the cusp. And we're about to put it over the edge right now. We're going to put this into platinum yacht status. Uh, from the makers of CBD, the miracle marijuana product that doesn't get you high comes gas With an A. That's right. It's gasoline that doesn't power your car. But it can be traded on Robin Hood. That's right. And the folks over at gas have found a way to make gasoline with only the non-flammable parts. But don't worry. It's still the same price. As regular gasoline. No hidden fees. Hmm. And it has many of the same properties as tap water. Oh, that's amazing. Good to know. And this is a product you can trust because it's made by the same scientists responsible for... The porous condom. Tasteless sugar. All the calories, none of the flavor. Bottomless drinking glass. It has no bottom. Wireless headphones without Bluetooth. Non-alcoholic beer that still gives you a hangover. And of course, the stationary roller coaster, which is the name of a CBD strand. Of course. Gasoline. Get it from your local gas station and walk home. Okay. I think we just made a little bit of cash, I think so. Quite a bit of cash. Um, I I stumbled there a little bit like I was... uh, on CBD. Yeah, well, that CBD it will really not mess you up it if you take too much of it. Yeah, that's the good. That's the good news is I wasn't on CBD. I was on CBD, so I could continue. Is there any amount of CBD that you could take that would make you a little psychotropic? No. Yeah. Okay. It's just a huge waste. It is a huge waste. Not like gasoline, which no. is a, uh, an unbelievable product. Unbelievable. I highly recommend. Very, you guys go get it. Uh, you can buy it with with. Dogecoin. You can buy it with yes. Any uh, you can buy it only with cryptocurrency. That's right. It's the only way. And uh, yeah, so get your gasoline. Get it. Drink it. Should we bring a guest on? You know, 
I think we should. <laughs> well, then, damn it, let's do it. Let's uh, do it. We have an amazing guest. We let's do. go right to him right now. All right, so excited to have this guest here today, yes. Graham. Uh, I love this guy. We've worked together a ton. The first time back in Tampa, in in uh, my hometown, and a random like road gig, <laughs> working with uh, Jay Chandrasekhar. Ah, uh, uh, big name dropper. Yeah, well, yeah, you were in that guy's movie for two lines. I was. Yeah, a lot of them were cut. Doesn't matter. That's here true. we are. That's a true story. Uh, <laughs> with with one of my favorite guys. He's spent 15 years at Howard Stern Show as a writer, producer, and on air personality. Incredible. He now has the Shuli Show podcast. You can check out his comedy album, Shulogy, available wherever you get albums, streaming everywhere. And this man is touring all over the country. Ladies and gentlemen. Guest Lord. Welcome, Daddy. Shuli Egar, everybody. Wow. <laughs> honored. Honored. I love it. Thank you guys for having me. Big it, fan. So nice of you to be here, man. We're excited to have you. And, you know, as someone you've spent a lot of time at the Howard Stern Show. And Howard is like a... I feel like a pioneer of edge. That's right. Like yes, he is. Eighties, nineties. Uh, yes. I don't think there was anyone edgier. Without him, we wouldn't be here. We aren't here without, without him. Without him, my dad would not have had sex with my mom. That's tr- I believe it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's full circle. You don't get more <laughs> yeah. full circle than that. Yeah. Nope. Well, once a week, uh, Graham and I go out to Don Imus's grave and we dance on it. That's <laughs> is he dead? I yeah, yeah. he's got to be dead. Got to right? be yeah. Oh. He was dead when he was alive the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're still sticking it to Imus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so here's what's going to happen, Shuli. We, even though you've obviously got some edgy credibility from your time with Howard Stern, we need to assess if you're edge lord level edgy. Uh, so we do that through our edgy lightning round where we ask you some questions and then we score you between one and five kettlebells of edginess. <laughs> okay, I love it. Yes. Perfect. And, so, yes, and five is good. Five is good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Edgy, edgy light, light lightning round. round. It's electric. Surely, <laughs> we start as we start every week with mm-hmm. the holy trinity of questions. What is your favorite drug, cigarette brand, and alcohol? Uh, weed, Marlboro Lights, mm. Crown Royal, Apple. Wow! On wow! The rocks. It, On the rocks. Wow! Like it a went- gentleman. Wow, it went edgy, edgy. Did you a little bit? Thirteen-year-old girl. <laughs> yes, yes twenty. <laughs> yeah, first-year college student. It took a hard yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very rarely uh, do do we get fruit within the answer yeah. for favorite yeah. alcohol. It used to be Zima, but I've I've been working out, so <laughs> yeah, that's, I yeah. pumped up. Yeah, crown out. You're, you're getting older. It's well, uh, you know what it is. I'm not a big booze. Like my dad let me try alcohol very early on, uh, mm-hmm. six months, seven months, <laughs> yeah. and I did not <laughs> like it then. I mm-hmm. and and so I've never been a beer guy. Yeah. And I figure if I'm gonna drink, I'll drink something that tastes somewhat because all of it tastes awful. Let's mm-hmm. be honest yeah. here. And so I'll drink something that can somewhat taste okay. And all I need is one. You know, because when you're the comic and you go, I have a drink, they give you a quadruple instead of just one. So that's all I need. I get halfway down. I'm I'm an easy lay. It, it's the weed that's that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Weed yeah. is the better time anyway. You wake up feeling okay. Not me. You, really? No, I can't. I I I I'm, I have a I get weed hungover. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, wow. I have r- really bad brain fog f- for like the whole next day. Huh. Well, that yeah. just means you're still high when you wake up. That's all that means. Yeah. That's not a hangover. Oh. Yeah, yeah you're just so, still riding that train, keep bro. Keep the party going, bro. Yeah. So yeah. we just last 48 hours yes, for me? Yes, for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're the guy that every weed head wants to be. They're chasing what you got. Right? They don't want what I got. <laughs> what I, I have is... Uh, I need to do cocaine to feel like how you feel without weed. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Shirley, do you think yeah. uh do you think the reason that uh like as a as a Jew you mm. are partial to sweet liquors, which sometimes I am, is because a mm. lot of Jews first experience with alcohol is Manischewitz. Manischewitz. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love I I would definitely make that connection as well as um you know, with the with the sweet alcohol comes complaining about everything. So those right. two yes. tie in yes. very well. That's yeah. uh that's the you know, yeah, the classic combo. It's primal for us. How, how does the sweet alcohol uh push you to to complain? Oh, because you get drunk and you you're like this is yeah, or just because we're Jewish and right. we'll yeah. go, and that's you just know, what we this do. is too sweet. It's not sweet enough. I see uh, it's too liquidy. Yes. You know, whatever it may be. 
I have We're no Jewish, whatever the complaint is. I have no recollection of this, but I was told by my parents that I got uh, accidentally drunk when I was five off of Manischewitz, which was on the dinner table. And when you, when you're a kid, like Manischewitz is, it's basically grape juice with a little bit of rubbing alcohol mixed mm, right. in. Right. Uh, and it's then like a squirt of Purell. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I guess I was drunkenly telling my whole family at the table, like I was lecturing them about when I was their age. Really? Yes. Yeah. It's a <laughs> drunken five year old. Really like when fun. I was your age, I used to we used to have to blah blah blah. That's a good bit. <laughs> I think it was yeah. might be my first bit. That's yeah. really funny. Oh, I uh, he got dark. He uh, ended up peeing on the Afi Coleman. Yeah. So that was <laughs> Look. <laughs> he got handsy with uh, with some of the ladies. <laughs> yes, but, yeah, who were yeah. just my sister and my mom. Yeah, so it was yeah. specifically <laughs> weird. Yeah, I was. I, I I'm from Canada, and they're on the CBC. They on the radio. There used to be a call in show where they had a wine expert, and people would call in and ask about this, like the wines that they had, and what it would pair with, and maybe they had like a vintage wine they were given at their wedding, and when is a good time to break it out, and what's you know whatever. And there, a Jewish man called up and was like, I have this really old Manischewitz. Uh, what's, what's it good with? And the wine expert was like, ah, quite frankly, it's terrible. Like, it was yeah. just couldn't. As, he was trying to sound, yeah. he's trying to tell the truth, but not sound anti-Semitic at the scene. It was like, it was very sure. uncomfortable and hilarious. Yeah. He goes, uh, I would rate that about seven dollars yeah. yeah. and ninety nine cents. And the caller's like, I'll give it to you for five ninety nine. What do you think? All right. Um Julie Yeager, what is your best tat? And you have to have one. I do have one. I only have one. I have uh my wife's name across my back. Really? Uh yeah, yeah. Wow. In Hebrew font because I married a non Jew. Wow. wow. So then you converted right. it to Hebrew as a, almost like marking your territory in some way. That's she, right. She well, marked she, hers. Yeah. Uh, well, she marked hers, and I have my name above uh, something I take, uh, I pound every every day and every night. <laughs> <laughs> her, your, uh, herself, your penis. Her self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her confidence. Uh, uh, yeah, right. No, she, she has her name. I, I uh, She has my name. I have hers. That's great. Um, yeah, and and I love the guy. When I went and got it, the guy's like, "Listen, dude," he's like, "You don't want to put a chick's name on you." And I'm like, "Well, she's my wife." He's like, "I'm just telling you." I'm just telling you. You don't, you don't want to do it. And I go, well, "Have you done?" He goes, "I have three. I go, I <laughs> fuck up. Give me a tattoo, you asshole." Yeah, so, one line through it. Uh, maybe we yeah, take Susan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like if you tell me don't do it and you haven't done it, then I take that advice a lot more seriously than the guy who made that mistake. Three times. Yeah. This yeah. is my one and only time. Because I got it on the top. If in case something doesn't work out, I can just put is a whore. On the <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Smart. So, yes. Yeah. Exit strategy. That's what the other guy was missing out on. I feel like exactly. he was like, don't put a don't put a chick's name. You'll regret it. <laughs> Tell you what you won't regret. Dragon neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, you'll, you'll regret getting so many compliments. Yeah. yeah. A shark with a baby skull. In yeah. That's what you want to walk out of here with. That's, that's the only drawing he can do. <laughs> Dragon neck. Not on the arm, only on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. I love that. Shuli, uh, you were a super fan of Howard Stern before becoming a part of that show and working there for 15 years. Uh, when can the Edge Lords expect your application? Mm -hmm. uh, what time is it right now? Uh, well, um, I could say easily. Well, listen, this 12 47 p.m. This podcast, I'm doing 11.47 where I'm at. Uh, oh. Let me know what's happening in the future, boys. <laughs> but. Um, I can tell you that my podcast, we're going to be doing episode 15 tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, give me 15 more. If it's not looking any better, uh, I'm all yours. Uh, you know, I've hit rock bottom and I'll join the team. <laughs> no, this is, if, if you're coming here, you're, you're not at rock bottom yet. There's, there's lower you can even go, I promise. There's lower than us? Huh? No, no, no. If he leaves where he's at to come to us, oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. There's, then, there's room. There's room, there's room to drop. We are the rock. Yes, that's. I want to clarify. <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We are in oh, fact how the rock. Excited, rock. grab God. There's someone lower. Than yeah, us. there's somebody lower. <laughs> 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 
just someone and, and there's not I, there's someone just shouting doing a podcast <laughs> just shouting into their uh, their their yeah. MacBook speaker there's someone with a <laughs> megaphone their Acer speaker just into the keyboard yeah there's like someone my dad like my dad on FaceTime where yeah. I just see his his temple the whole time yeah he's gotta yeah. hold it up to his ear yeah. yeah there's someone yelling through a traffic cone at Skid Row who's got a bigger following <laughs> yes. than us no we're doing okay we're doing good. Numbers are up, up, up. Thank you so much, listeners. Rate and review. Big, oh. leave a review or I'll kill myself. <laughs> uh, um, Shuli, um, you moved from New York to Alabama. What's it like to be the only latka in a sea of hush puppies? <laughs> well, by the way, for the record, when we moved here, my wife goes, there's a synagogue half a mile from here. And I'm like, you mean a trap? I'm, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fall for that. Shit, um, no, Just a facade with a cage on the other side. <laughs> it says Jewish Roach Motel. Yeah. You go in, you don't come out. Um, I, uh, I, I have some friends out here in, in Huntsville. Uh, one of them's a, a mortgage guy, and he's been trying to get me to invest in property out here for years now, just cause the area is, in particular Huntsville um, is really was, is booming, was booming, continues to boom. So when we are locked down in New York and we're trapped in this two bedroom apartment, four people, you know, three cats, yep. a dog. I said, why not make this interesting? Let's get in a vehicle. Let's drive 14 hours to Huntsville mm -hmm. and see what the hell this place is. And, you know, because we're looking at the houses and we can afford it mm -hmm. and yeah. we can afford a really nice house out here. So let's just go see what the people like, uh, the, the atmosphere. And as soon as we got out here, we were like, this is fantastic. Everybody is just living life. They're, they're just, they're not up your ass about politics. They're not up your ass about this, that, the other thing, everybody's just doing their thing and they're all very polite. And, you know, I say this to everybody, the thing I love the most about the South is they still beat their kids and yep. <laughs> raises a good crop. I yes. don't care what anybody says. It's, yeah. You're keeping them honest. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Are you just, you, are I'm you not, reminding your children of that regularly that I moved you from, from liberal New York to a place where it's not frowned upon here? Yeah. To, Cause they know I'm not going to hit them, but, <laughs> but I like that they know we're in a spot where shit can go down or you, you know won't be judged I mean? for it. I was wondering oh, if you do hit them and, uh, those are, uh, accurate, uh, paintings of them behind you. <laughs> no, this, this is from a fan who drew one painting is me and yeah. the other one is Howie Mandel. That's hilarious. So, yeah. You're aware, yeah I, I do. I love, I love to see one. Like, You're black. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've done interviews with two black guys and both of them at this, at, at the start of the interview, they're like, is that supposed to be some kind of joke uh, back there behind you? I'm like, is that a painting of me? I'm like, I didn't even realize I was black till you said it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we came out here. We fell in love with the area, the, the cost of living, the people, uh, the peace of mind. You know, my kids got a front yard, a backyard. They got a, a ton of friends around. They, they're learning how to ride a bike. Finally, they're, they're doing all the things kids are doing that I don't think they would have had a chance where we were and you lived in in brooklyn or where no we lived in astoria we lived in a really nice part of astoria that got real real shitty real fast uh when the when the lockdown started we had a, about three different times someone try to break into our building Whoa. uh oh. we had we had a little yard like a 80 square foot yard that we would hang out in the back and somebody from an apartment nearby started lobbing bottles over in our yard and yeah. I walked out. There was a guy shitting behind my car, and he wasn't wearing a mask. I'm sorry so about that. Yeah. By the way, I want to I want to apologize for that. I was. Yeah. It was just. I have I, a compromised I, immune system, dude. You know, wear a mask if you're gonna. Yeah. yeah on the street. Yeah. Too yeah. much to ask for. And you know, so, he, 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 yeah. you know, he's these homeless people. They uh, they eat a lot of solids, so I imagine they're not too many droplets. Oh, that was my landlord. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Oh, right, right. No, fair, he was right, right. waiting for the rent check. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, he figured, why he's there, you know? Yeah, so you hit the point of, we're, that's it. We're up and moving to Alabama. Yeah. And yeah. I, I respect so, that move. We love it, man. We're, I'm 10 minutes from Stand Up Live, the comedy club. They're, they're very generous with uh, spots and stuff and work. And then, you know, at the time, I've been here seven months. So when we moved here, we moved to the only part of the country where Stand Up was still legal indoors. Right. You know, here, Florida, Tennessee, uh, Atlanta, uh, Texas. So 
um, while a lot of my friends were, you know, slowly getting stage time, I, I got to jump right back into doing stand up, which was great. And, and then I left the job and, and been doing my own thing ever since. So now I have peace of mind everywhere. Nice man. The board. Uh, yeah. It's funny intersection of those States are like, we love jokes and we love guns. That's yeah. who we are. Don't joke about guns. <laughs> yeah. Except we don't no. love jokes about guns. Yeah. That's right. But I, I, I can tell you that the gun thing, you know, nobody's honking at anybody when you're driving. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a system that works so far that uh, I've seen. Uh, all right, Shuli, big, big edgelord question here. Stallone or Schwarzenegger? You got to go Stallone. Oh, I don't know if you do got to go Stallone. Why? Why? Why Stallone? First of all, I mean, the Rocky... Uh, quadruples. Okay, I, I count Rocky four. I know some people stop at Rocky three, but when you have a training montage in the snow, pulling yep. an ox cart, mm-hmm. you got me. I'm in. That's that's badass. That's tough as shit. That's a real man. A mm-hmm. guy who's training with just newspaper clipping clippings in a mirror. Yeah, that's old school. That's, Is that that's the Russian motivation. one? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he that's climbs right. a mountain. Ivan Drago. It's uh, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's, that's seen <laughs> <laughs> that's always the theme of, of Rocky movies is like, uh, you know, like this guy trains in a, in an unconventional, like, yeah. way, you know, like here he is hitting meat. Yeah. Not like this pussy hitting the bag yeah. in a professional environment. You yes. know? Here's him. Here's these, a hun- yeah, go yeah. Ahead, Here's these communists with their superior technology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Us capitalists, all we have is uh, an ox cart. Yeah. And here's Rocky. Here's Rocky racing his friend on the beach in a hundred yard dash yeah. Yeah. and then asking ending. him to slow down because oh. he's black oh. yeah. <laughs> and you have a, a homoerotic hug in yeah, the water yeah. Yeah. you have a title fight coming up we're gonna drop you in the Chechen mountains with yeah. no clothes <laughs> <laughs> that'll get you ready <laughs> yeah that, those alone are great tango and cash you can't you can't yes, pass up tango a and cash amazing like tango and cash amazing never seen it uh uh, uh, no. Oh, it's Sorry. great. Kurt Russell, but kind of buddy cop uh, vibe going. Mm. Yeah, you can go home early. Yeah, uh, right. thanks. Right. Uh, I'll go wait in the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, his body, and here's what makes him number one. Okay. The guy writes the original Rocky. Yes, that's huge. Everybody wants to do it without him. Mm-hmm. He says, double bird, I'm, yep. I'm doing it myself, mm-hmm. and I'll wait until I can do it my and does and does it and kills it and is a legend. You have to and sell his guy, dog. Have to sell his dog. Wait, I don't know that Graham. part of it. I don't know that yeah, part of it. to sell his dog. Uh, yeah. And then he he bought his dog back once he got, like, did well. And he bought it yeah. for $15,000 in, like, 1974, which is, what, $100 <laughs> million dollars now? This, this is That's the precursor right. to dog coin. Was yeah, 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 speculating yeah. on actual dogs. That guy, was that guy who sold them. I but, bought this dog yeah. and quadrupled in value. <laughs> and you know him as Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> That's really um, funny. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that alone. I mean, look, Schwarzenegger, listen, you got to respect the guy showing up when not, not knowing the English language. You yeah. know, my folks, we came here from Israel. My parents didn't know English. They, they figured it out. It's impressive. It's not easy to do. Uh, but I gotta, I gotta pick Stallone. Yeah. And same, mm-hmm. you know, my mother's Israeli. We've had this conversation and her yes. name is Shuli and you're the yes. first, I, I, in my mind, it was just only a woman's name. It was actually only my mother's well, it name. it is. Yeah. It is a woman's name. Shauli uh-huh. is my name, yeah. my actual name, but the A really throws people. Yeah, I can see that. So I dropped it to Shuli and now it's just me, Israeli women and Japanese female singers. <laughs> <laughs> what a combo. That is yeah. impressive uh, that uh, I, you have to have to respect an immigrant moving here with who has to learn a, a new Another language. language. And that, that is successful. I am an immigrant and I know the language and I am not successful. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is. I'm yes. learning the language out here too. We moved to another, another That's true. World. It is a whole other language out they there. Drop, they drop the letter G off of almost everything out here. Mm. Oh, I'd be, yeah. I'd be uh, Rayum. <laughs> that's your you're an unbelievable level of redneck if you're dropping g's off the front yeah <laughs> ram ram i love it 
I love it. Ram K. <laughs> <laughs> the Dodge Man. I mean, that's your poor name, if ever. Yeah. You know, Ram K. Ram K. <laughs> uh, um, I hear you. You're a fan <laughs> of 1980s rock and roll. That's what the intel says. Um, now, if uh, you had to let a band cuck you, would it be ACDC or Metallica? Neither. I'd go Iron Maiden. <laughs> Pulling an audible on getting cucked. Right. I, like, right. yeah. I like that. You're an alpha cuck. Yeah. That's rare. That's right. That's right. I want the whole band. Dickinson, <laughs> I want Eddie there. I want a plane in the background. I know the fucker can fly. I, I just want it in the background. I want to I want to feel like I'm at a fan expo while I'm getting annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is so cool. Yeah. Is that too much to ask for? Nice laminate or something. This you know? hurts quite a bit, but it is a show <laughs> it's a production pyro let's do yeah. some pyro <laughs> yeah that would be my pick this uh, uh, tattoo he was right about the tattoo <laughs> shouldn't have gotten it but <laughs> <laughs> should have gone with dragon neck yeah, yeah. <laughs> should have went with dragon neck uh, all right Julie uh, you're a gamer uh, yeah, as evidenced by the chair you're sitting in. That's true. Uh, That's right. We've wow. played a little bit of Call of Duty together. Yes. Uh, you are considerably better than me. Um, <laughs> well, which, that's not saying much. It's really not. Uh, which do you think is better, uh, PS5 or being an attentive and loving father to your children? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, man. I, I, I lose a true story. I'm playing one day this game, uh, Apex Legends, where you team up with two other random people. It's mm -hmm. a trio. And I get into this team, and one of the guys doesn't have a mic, and the other guy does. And as I'm about to say something to him, I hear his kid come in the room. He goes, Daddy, Daddy. He goes, Not now. <laughs> you know dad's playing right now, okay? <laughs> you know the rules. Wait till dad's done, then you can talk to dad. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm like, you got to take that down a notch, <laughs> yeah. man. And he's like, shut up. Let's just play the game. Let's just play. <laughs> and I go, dude, I go, listen, I'm a dad. I'm talking to you as a dad to another dad. You know, they're, they're only going to be asking to play with you for so long right? Then those days are gone and you're going to miss it. And he goes, oh yeah, your dad, where are your kids? And I'm like, they're not here. That's why I'm talking and playing with you right now. Yeah. But if they came, like I would stop and I would, I would do it. And he's like, I just want to play the game. <laughs> I said, okay, man, but you're going to regret this later. And you know what he does? You know what he does? Uh -huh. He quits like a fucking pussy. Oh, you, uh, you don't you, ever quit. You don't ever quit. I sat there for 10 minutes just yeah. cursing this guy out in my mind. What a piece of shit. I wish now you could have found him. Yeah, well, that's, and he was yeah, just playing yeah. with his kids, uh, playing what a catch. <laughs> you dadded a dad. He didn't come there. He didn't. Come, if you would follow it up to, be, to teach him the lesson of you don't ever quit on top of it, that would make you the top alpha dad of all time. Well, I stayed and played the game because I'm a real man. I finished the game. I didn't do well, and I was 15 minutes late picking up my daughter. <laughs> yeah. so, so, In the rain at soccer story. practice. Yeah. Oh, really? Story. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. so funny. Um, what is your favorite way to shred your bod? <laughs> uh, I have this pull-up bar. That I got that goes on the door frame. Oh yeah, yeah. And, oh, that's and, hot. But it, but it doubles as a push up thing too because mm -hmm. you know sometimes I forget how to put my hands on the ground and do push ups. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. thing, yeah. There's a lot going on in my life right now. I have my own show. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, so I do a few pull ups and then and then I go back to the to the push ups. But then I realize, you know, I'm just switching uh, upper body exercises. And after 10 minutes, I can't do a push up or a pull up. because <laughs> I'm completely wiped out. But that's all I need really is 10 minutes. And this is look at that. That's look at pretty that. good. Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah. Check yep. that out. Look yeah. That. Yep. That's 10 yeah. minutes is all you need. I that's my that's my <sighs> fitness goal is just being able to hold up my own weight during sex for as much as nine minutes. Without shaking. Yes, without yeah. shaking. And the reviews are in. <laughs> the reviews are in, and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not making it. No. I just tell yeah. her she feels amazing, but a little chilly, too. Yeah. So it explains the shaking. A little chilly. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, this is a big one coming up. Uh, Women so- do not like to hear that their vagina is cold. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, they don't. No. no. They do not. No. Uh, uh, room temperature or lukewarm mm-hmm. is always a good one. That's cold. what you're shooting for. You're aiming for yeah. lukewarm. Your vagina is lukewarm. <laughs> Baby, mm. like my love for you. This vagina is mm-mm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a meat thermometer. Uh, <laughs> Turkey's done. <laughs> it's just right. <laughs> 56. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to a doctor right now. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Shuli, favorite all time babe. Can be a man or a woman. We're not here to judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite all time babe. Yeah. Here's, here's, okay. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Ooh, Take this journey up. with me. I am. I think he's a butt man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nicole Eggert, Charles in charge. That's your last name. Well, close. 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 But yeah. Nicole Eggert or Alyssa Milano. A little a, like after who's the boss? Who's the boss? So you're heavily influenced by your '80s sitcom loves who grew into being super hot in like kind of oh. early '90s. Alyssa Milano had a poster. I remember I wanted to buy it. I saw it at the mall. She had a poster that had a, a her belly hair, like a trail of her belly hair. Mm-hmm. I think about it now; it's disgusting. But at the time, <laughs> like little blonde had, hair. No, it's dark. She's like Italian no. or something. Yeah, it was like a darkish hair going like going down weird. to the jeans. Uh-huh. Yeah, very weird. But I remember at the time, I was like, this is really hot. It was like, she's hairy. And then who knows? It's probably like a pine forest down it's there. It's an but- absolute debacle <laughs> down yeah. there. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but Nicole Eggert was a poster that I did buy. And yeah. uh, I put some work on those curls, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, wow. Yeah, dog. I do know. Wait, was Nicole Eggert later in like Baywatch or something? Yes. I have no yes. idea who. Yes. I don't know who any of those people are. Oh, is that true? Both of them I don't know. Those are both huge shows, and I imagine yeah. they were I big I, in I, Canada I, as well. I, they were. I wasn't allowed to have cable television. Yeah. I. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, those Prison? Were, <laughs> sort of. Were you uh-huh. serving hard time? I did for about eighteen years. <laughs> I was always, uh, I was always skeptical of Charles in Charge because the theme song was, uh, I think it was brainwashing. It was, it was getting people ready to live in a police state. It was all like the theme song is Charles in Charge of our days and our nights. Charles in Charge of our wrongs and our rights. I want Charles in charge of me. Really? Yes. I want so Charles in charge. <laughs> yeah, super big yeah. brother. Yeah, that's so true. And she was so hot back then. She was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alyssa Milano, who is now like just an unbearable Twitter talking head type. Yeah, she's awful. But uh, listen, I'd throw that uh, Vicky from Small Wonder a ride too. Don't think I won't. You're going to work your way through all the sitcoms. Come on. Come on. The mom from Silver Spoons? Let's go. What else you got? I'd roll in the hay with Mr. Belvedere, given the opportunity. (laughs) I just want to keep naming more things. Graham has no idea. I got what we're a silver about. spoon for you. Uh, I, I just start naming uh, obscure Canadian shows. <laughs> Who's that moose? <laughs> all we watch is Who's that moose? Larry? <laughs> Franklin? <laughs> TV was bad uh, up TV there. Was not good. <laughs> it was not good. good. You guys had hairy, <laughs> hairy vagina babes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Well, that that concludes the edgy lightning round. Great. We, we have one more. Oh, we do. We have one more. Oh, very we do. We do. A super important one. Yes. And this uh, this this uh, goes seamlessly into this next one. Um, Transition seamlessly. What is your favorite euphemism for sex? Mine is Ooh. naming that moose. <laughs> naming that moose is good. Um, let's see here. There's bumping uglies was a good one yeah. for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, assuming you both have ugly genitals. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, aren't they all? Generally. You know, when yeah. it's all said and done. Uh, no. I <laughs> just look longingly. <laughs> I heard uh, I heard Dom Irera years ago once call it spanking little Johnny behind the ear. Which, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but it's always stuck into my head. It, it's, well, yeah, it's the once you hit the behind the ear, it really yeah. ramps up. It's yeah, just a yeah. cute euphemism that pedophiles use. That's all. That's all. <laughs> spanking little Johnny behind the ear. Behind the ear. <laughs> 
love that. Imagine trying to like uh, pick up a girl with that, huh? That's- how about yeah, how about you and me uh, go back to my place and spank little Johnny behind the ear? <laughs> It was. Uh, I have a shit. son, <laughs> and he's been acting up. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was a disciplinary school. I'm sorry. Uh, there was an old Shandling special he did years ago called "Alone in Vegas," mm-hmm. and uh, and there's this. He did like some like quick little sketches at the beginning of it, and one of them is he's in his hotel room and he picks up the phone and he dials this number and he's like, "Yeah, I'd like a girl to come by," and he's like, uh, "How much for?" Uh, a around the world in a wagon and then how much for a <laughs> uh-huh. pump the professor yeah and and then he's like oh i'm sorry i have to dial nine to get an outside line i apologize <laughs> yeah that's great yeah. i love those silly sex yeah. i remember i was at some like restaurant once and there was like their specials of the day and the, the like the waiter was like and uh special for the day it, i would think i was over in the uk like is a lancashire hot pot and i was like that's the, <laughs> the most sexual sounding thing i've ever heard <laughs> You uh, just come reading it. You're like, uh, I'm done. How much for a Lancashire hot pot? <laughs> uh, okay, Shuli, hang with us. Uh, bear with us I'm for here, a minute. Uh, we have to tabulate the scores That's right. of ahead. this edgy lightning round. Okay. Uh, mm. So, uh, um, came out hot out of the gate with uh, with drug of choice and cigarette, then took a hard turn on the liquor. Gonna have to uh, subtract. Oh yeah, sorry. That. We're da- yeah, we're yeah, da- yeah, we're yeah. Da- docks yeah. point for that. Yeah, point for that. very embarrassing uh, for him as yeah. a man. Uh, um, best hat. Wife's name. Wife's name. Yeah. Did it? Uh, but he, you know what? He are he fought for it he with the tattoo he, guy. He, he, it was so edgy. Even a tattoo artist he said, "No, yeah, don't do it." He said, it. "Fuck you." The one's back. He gets yeah, one back. One there back for, for that. that. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, willing to willing to host our show, but uh, uh, acknowledging that, that would be rock bottom. For yeah, him. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts quite a bit. Yeah, that hurts a bit. Yeah, but that, he gets one for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. Uh, um, um, pull up, pull up bar, pull pull up bar, and uh, also used for push ups. That's, that's good. It's two different workouts. Yeah, I have which that is... same thing. I never knew it was for push ups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it is, but yeah. he's figured out a way. <laughs> figured out a way. Uh, oh, he's he's out dadding the dads. He's, he's teaching dads how to dad and alphaing them. And at the same time, shirking his own responsibilities as a dad, which I think is super edgy. It's very good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to yeah. agree. Full five. Full five, five kettlebells. kettlebells. Surely, congratulations. Let's go. Let's Honey, I got the full five. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What, Dad? Shut up. Yeah. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> doing a podcast. <laughs> Not now. Yeah. My dad needs his full five points. <laughs> uh, well, that five qualifies you to join us for our little segment called Scalding Hot Takes. Burn me, Daddy. <laughs> Uh, we got some hot takes for you, uh, Shuli. We want to talk. These are these are too too hot for TV, too hot for radio. These could only survive on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Let's um, do it. I have one. Go. All right. So you were talking. About, you have moved to Alabama from New York City. You have yes. moved to the Burbs. Right? Yes. Um, you wanted your kid to have a front yard. That's what people always yeah. say when they move to, I want my kid to have a yard, grow up playing in a yard. Mm-hmm. Basically sure. what you're saying is you want your kid to grow up playing alone. Uh, <laughs> heaven forbid he goes to a park and meets a brown person. <laughs> That's why we moved. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I like the front yard because now they can play and it's in viewing distance. I, I can keep an eye on my child. Well, and by the way, I don't know if you've read the news, but you let your kid walk to a park today, you're going to jail. The kid's walking by itself. Uh, the cops find out the kid's walking without a guardian or an adult. And really? You know, they t- it's actually, yeah, like there's a story of a, a kid. I think he was a year older than my old. Uh, my oldest is 11. My youngest is six. And I think this was like 12 and five-year-old or something or a four-year-old. And she was walking them. The 12 year old was walking her little brother or sister to the park down the road from them. And the cops came and they went and fucked with the parents. And they were like, I mean, this is yeah. bananas compared to how we grew up. Like we couldn't wait to get out of the house. Yeah. We, we would go for hours on end. Hours. There was no way to keep contact. There was no, no right. checking in. 
and you just came back when it was dinner time. And yeah. That was it. I'm super. And so, yeah. Co- cognizant of these new rules, and that's why I go out of my way to, if I see a kid walking alone, then I follow them. You follow them. I follow <laughs> yes. them, and that's my way of giving back. Yes, you neighborhood know? watch. Yes, yes. I've gotten, I'm, I'm no longer allowed to do this no. by law. I got a lot of. Well, my daughter kept trouble saying, this in is my not life. neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah. My daughter was walking to a park uh, when we first got out here. There's one down the road, actually. And uh, on the way there, she finds this uh, um, welder's mask on the ground. <laughs> so that's concerning she, out of the gate. And yes. she's like, so of course she's a kid. What does she do? She picks it up, yeah. starts playing with it, right? And then, uh, and then she's telling me all this later at night. I didn't know any of this. A uh, car comes up. Asked to give her a ride, oh, and oh. she gets in. No, Whoa. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. And she's sitting there, you know, playing with the mask that's on her head. Oh, no. And the guy goes, uh, do you know what molestation is? And she says, I'm not really a welder, and gets out of the car. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I, I really thought... <laughs> five. I, I really thought that this was a real and horrifying story. <laughs> But turned out to be a great joke, which is... I, I love that you thought that he was going to be... And then... <laughs> no, I didn't. My daughter's never been the same. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to end in a molestation. <laughs> and she was ravaged. I, I didn't think anyway, this was that. Anyway, next question, gentlemen. <laughs> next hot take. I'm not really a welder. I'm not really a welder. But she a didn't great get COVID because she was wearing a mask. <laughs> 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 that is the amazing. Itself, there's like two more things you get. You know, the guy asks like two more things, and the kid just goes, "Mister, I'm not really a welder." Yeah, which is fantastic. I, I love. I love a good classic joke. Classic joke. Yeah. Uh, uh, pretty edgy too. Yeah. It involved yeah. your own daughter. Have you ever? Because you Stern, you. I think you might have even had it like Jackie, the joke man, who can just for six hours straight tell those types of jokes like without oh, yeah. any type of break. With, with zero break, he he. Uh, yeah, you name it, and he's got a joke on it. I tested him once. I go, uh, I go Auschwitz, and he goes, uh, couples touring through Europe. They're doing a tour of the camps in Poland. They're in the hotel. They go down to eat breakfast. The woman says, I'm going to the restroom. She tells the husband, when you order the omelet, don't get onions in it because it upsets your stomach. And, of course, she leaves, and the husband orders the omelet with onions, and, and then they go off on their tour. And when they come back to the hotel, the woman slams the door shut and she's super pissed. And he goes, what's wrong? And she said, you had the onions, didn't you? And he said, yeah. And she said, you ruined Auschwitz for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here we go. This is a, this is a uh, scalding hot take. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. No, this one is. Uh oh. Yeah. Get your get your firefighters uniform on because. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we've never had a guest with their own bumps. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> give this man, oh give this man a, a, a six kettlebell, for Christ's sake. By the way, I got, I got going to break music if you want. We'll be right back here with Robbie Slowick. Yes. I love how you have going to break music and you have a podcast. <laughs> no, you truly are great. from radio. Yeah, we gotta take a break. I gotta pick my kid up from soccer. I'll be back in thirty-eight minutes, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Uh, All right, go ahead, John. Uh, All right, here we go. Uh, Extremely hot take. This is a hot take. It's very current. It's very Scalding. now. Mm. Uh, I think Scar in the Lion King. Ah. Uh, I get, I get why he did what he did, because here mm-hmm. he is, a member of the family. Well, this is hot take. Brother of the king, you know, yes. uncle mm-hmm. of the future king. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the most defining thing about him is this hideously disfiguring scar he right. has on his face, and then they all just call him Scar. That hurts. The whole family calls him Scar. He's got Mufasa, Simba. They, he's got a proud African name, and his whole family is like, you got a scar on your face, bro. Your name's Scar. Of course you're like, fuck this. It's like if you hang out with like the, the kid in the wheelchair and you're like, here comes wheels, eventually yes. that kid's going to be like, fuck you guys. Which is what actually in uh, the Canadian show, um, the Grassy Junior High, uh-huh. there was a, a, guy, a guy in a wheelchair and they called him wheels. <laughs> I swear to God. No, that, that was a thing in the 90s. That, yeah. There was even that in like the Burger King Kids Club. There was a one in a wheelchair. Like They were trying inclusivity and doing it yeah. Not right at all. <laughs> Wheels and blackie. Yeah. <laughs> I had a hugely obese friend growing up, and we all called him Tiny as a nickname. That That's empowering. See, that exactly. Makes somebody, 
you know, that gives some, of course he died at 30 of heart disease. Is that true? Whatever. Oh yeah. But, uh, oh, but I mean, and sad. he was not tiny as a Paul bear. I can tell you that there was nothing <laughs> tiny about that, but joke was on you, uh, but he was never, uh, he never felt attacked. He never felt. Uh, That's right. Yeah. If they'd called you know. Scar not Scar, he would have had no excuse. Yes. For what he did. But mm. I think. I'm, I'm, <laughs> not Scar. Not exactly. Scar. Exactly. Yes. yes. And also. The other side of your face. Just in general. <laughs> yeah. Our childhood era. <laughs> yeah. Call him the other side of your face. <laughs> our our childhood era of, uh, of Disney movies was uh, unreasonably pro-monarchy. Oh, mm. this is a, this is a, a sub hot take. Yes, just <laughs> everything wow. is about trying to maintain the the king. You are the rightful king. You were a lot of kings. born into this rank. That's right. Everyone else must look up to you. Little mermaid, she a princess who marries a, a king. Aladdin, Jafar is a low born person trying to get power from the rightful king. This is why so many people in our generation look up to billionaires. Yes, Disney has trained them yes. to do so. Elon Musk is our god. Monarchist. He was born into this. Yes, he was. He owned a diamond mine. I believe it's called grooming. They're grooming us That's for these right. billionaires. That's exactly what is happening. Sons of bitches. I, Sons. I, I won't stand for it. Bitches! <laughs> I won't stand for it either. That's why I'm sitting. It's, uh, this is... uh, I appreciate your form of protest. Uh, as, as do I. Um, this is a pretty edgy. Okay. A scalding hot take. I may have done it before, but you did move away from New York City. Yes, I did. Um, are how are you going to live without bodegas? I don't understand why every other city doesn't have bodegas. I don't understand when I leave New York. I'm like, why can't I go to a place and get whatever I want? Like a bacon, I, egg, and cheese, for example. You will never mm. have a bacon, egg, and cheese again. You you can have all the ingredients. They can make it for you. It won't taste the same. They don't have that weird bacon. Right. Well, listen, first of all, the reason, because uh, I looked into this, the reason why there are no bodegas uh, in Huntsville is there's not enough random cats to populate. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. That's number two, uh, yes, you do miss those things, but we all remember Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't know if they allowed you to watch that in your homeland of Canada. Graham, but we all remember <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark when he grabs the statue, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and he has the bag of sand. Yeah. That's the thing. You got In Canada, they replaced with it with a Crown Royale a bag. <laughs> <laughs> so we would Crown understand. Yeah. 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 Uh, but like that, that is so, okay. Yeah. I can't have a bacon, egg and cheese, but I can have a biscuit chicken, you know, uh, right. breakfast sandwich here, okay. barbecue I can get here will, you know, okay. knock your dick in the dirt. That's Good actually point. a name of one of the barbecues. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you are right. going to miss some things, but, uh, but you know, I don't have uh, strange people's shit in front of my house. The, the pooing uh, by your car is tough. That is concerning. Yeah. yeah. That is a concern. If it happened once. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit on my car. Yeah. Shame on twice. You. Yeah. Shame on me. <laughs> I've been there 15 years. I've seen way too much shitting on this public street. Uh, okay. Uh, my final hot take of the day. Uh, I think uh, society in general, I think, let me just boil it down to this. They shouldn't make like superhero t-shirts or Star Wars t-shirts in adult sizes. Ooh, this yes. I like. You yes. just got to accept that like this stuff is no longer for me. Yes. You know, the, the biggest size it should come in is like husky child. Yeah, you know? I agree. Right. That, but at past yes. 13, it, it's done. Stop wearing those shirts. Uh, I totally agree with that. I think that's a good point. And I think uh, uh, in the same vein, uh, we should not be making NASA... Space program shirts in women's sizes. <laughs> Finally, right. someone was brave enough to say it. <laughs> um, by the way, I, I took two years ago, we took uh, my oldest to, uh, we, we all went to Florida, but we took her for the Harry Potter thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, big Harry Potter fan. And no lie, the only people in lines were adults, and they're all with Man. the capes and the wands. And I'm like, this this is not normal right. behavior. No. And, right. and you... And I told my wife, I said, it's so funny you brought this up because I said, 
why are they making these in adult sizes? So these people are now That's showing so up dressed up. It's so ridiculous. Yes, yes. A, 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 a twenty-nine-year-old holding a wand at Harry Potter World should that should be I- illegal. You should be arrested Posing, for waiting that. for the friend to take a picture of him oh, to God. document what yeah. an asshole they look like. Yes. like get out of here. Yes. It's just, it's, it's, they, they say, oh, it's just that people, like, they're like, oh, you know, people lose their childhood imagination. We have to work to get that. Uh-huh. But that's not what that is. They right. think they're doing that, but that's not, what they are. They're just lonely. That's, yes. They're lonely sad. and they need something. Yes. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate the gall of a man uh, telling someone to grow up sitting in a gaming chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Surrounded by puppets, yeah, yeah. Letters, <laughs> everything. Uh, yeah. One you, last thing. You know, you knock it all over, and your therapist is sitting in that chair yeah. behind you. <laughs> the wig for my alter ego. Yeah, that's good. What's the alter ego? Her name is Patricia, better known as Tan Mom. Hello. Tan Mom. Hi. I'm from Nutley, New Jersey. How are you? <laughs> I used to do the Tan Mom puppet and the voice on the show, and now I do a cameo because I've sold my soul. So occasionally people want to see Tan Mom or hear from Tan Mom, so I put the wig on for them. Definitely do cameo. If, if people want to see you, do cameo. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did a, uh, I had a small, I was in a NBC competition, comedy competition for one second, and they were like trying to get me on cameo. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> me? The only people that would do it are my enemies to make fun of me. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if people, actual fans want to see, I mean, I, I don't think it's selling your soul. I think it's, co- I think it's cool. Who cares? Totally. It makes uh, people I- happy and you make money. I like it, and and so the first cameo I got was from a fan of the show who was like goofing on me, and he's like, uh, "Hey, my buddy Rick uh, is about to quit his job, and his wife and kids are not happy with this decision." He's which is talking about me quitting my job. <laughs> so he's basically going, "His wife and two kids are going to be poor and on the street. Can you send him a message to get his shit together?" It's like, <laughs> oh, so send me a message to get my shit. I get. Yeah, it. I Thanks. see. What's happening here? Yeah, that's what's really happening. funny. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, and of course you did it. You, uh, <laughs> you paid yourself. Yeah, I got that. I got that twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Uh, uh, Shuli, do you have any advice for Graham and I on how we can be more edgy? <sighs> Boy, I mean, you guys are pretty fucking close right now. I mean, yeah, I don't. We're doing it. (laughs) Respect. Respect. I would just say, Graham, you know, uh, just lie and pretend you know what people are talking about rather than admit that you were in solitary confinement and not allowed to watch any type of entertainment of any kind. Um, That's, yeah, uh, probably a good idea. Yeah, I should never I mean, tell him the truth. We're gonna get caught up on Charles in Charge after this podcast. We're binging. Yeah, sh- show the whole him thing. Nicole Edgar. Show him, please. I will text you the posters, yeah. Robbie, so you know you. I, yeah. I speak truths here. I'll show you Alyssa Milano's happy trail. I can't wait to get a a, a huge boner and put it under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, Shuli, uh, anything you want to plug before you drop off? I was going to say just a little advice, maybe a piercing or two. Oh, oh cool. You know? Yeah. 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 Maybe a little nose thing or, or nipples or a mesh tank top. Oh, that Whoa. is edgy. Yeah, mesh, mesh tank top good. with yeah. a skull on it, by the way, oh. is super edgy yeah. and very popular in the pride parade. If you've, uh, which is seen it. edgy, yeah, edgy, yeah. edgy in your oh, neck of the statement. woods, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's edgy every neck of the woods, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> the mesh, the mesh tank top. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. into it. Uh, that's it's the first item of clothing my wife threw out when we started dating. <laughs> <laughs> You're straight now. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I said, it's called a glom box at the radio station. It's just free shit, so I can't say no. Uh, yeah, how can you how can you pass up on a free mesh tank top? You can't can't do it. I won't do it. Same way same way you can't pass up on a bottle of bacon lube, which I brought home. <laughs> that's and, uh, so funny. Promptly got thrown out, but whatever. you know it's just not uh, something a Jewish person should be doing kosher it's not yes, kosher it's not you're right yeah. huh. uh anything to plug sorry uh the shuli show uh you can i do it live every tuesday on patreon 
Patreon.com, The Shuli Show. If you don't want to uh, pay the five bucks, that's cool. Every Friday, it's released on audio for everywhere, uh, on every platform. And then on YouTube on Friday, we release uh, the video version uh, with commercials and stuff. But um, And that's The Shuli Show on YouTube. So check out The Shuli Show. Awesome. Awesome. Shuli, thanks so much for joining us, man. This was so much fun. Yeah, thank you so My much. My pleasure. Hilarious. Oh, thank you guys, man. I love the show. Keep it going. Uh, you two are super fucking funny. Together. Separate, you have nothing. We're working so, on it. Yeah. Together. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I had a blast, dude. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. And that was Shuli Egar. He's the Shuli, best, He's huh? the best. Great guy. Very funny. He is a great guy. Yeah. Super funny. Uh and yeah, he took a big step, like leaving something as uh, I respect that. Yeah, yes. Y- you know, the Stern Show is such an institution, so to like leave that to break out uh, on your on your own. Uh, yeah. So give him a follow or whatever. But also, folks, you know what I'm going to tell you to do. I'm going to tell you to rate and review the podcast. We have stalled on the rates and reviews. Yeah, we need you guys to spread the word of the Edge Lords and and uh, yes, and give us a review, and we'll share some of the funny ones on here on social media. Uh, some of the good ones, we will uh, do our. We will contact Apple to have the bad ones removed. That's we will right. sue if need be. But even if you want to leave a bad one, I, I I do believe that it does still help. Yeah, whatever. And uh, yeah, so leave a review. Um, and as always, if you don't, I'll kill myself. Steve, Graham will kill himself. Yes. Anything left to add, Graham? No. Um, I think we'll t- just just the regular. Well then, like we say every week, fuck, fuck you. you.